What is nostalgia? That's a good question, and one that's hard to talk about. It's basically a feeling, a feeling of longing, almost a sadness, of something forgotten. It could be a memory. We could be remembering something. Maybe a time, even a place, when things were better than they are now. We might can all remember times like that, maybe when we were children, we were more carefree, we're living under as much pressure, external pressures, to live from within, let's say. But how, how do we get back to a state like that? Perhaps nostalgia is a way for our inner self or the higher power to try and send a message for us to come back home. If you have that sense of remembrance, yeah. a sense of a, a better place or a better person, a, a, any kind of nostalgic sense, if we can have that sense when we can get out of our own way, something can spring from there. Mm -hmm. and give us a bit of an intuition mm -hmm. and it might tell us a little bit about what we need to look at what we need to do next If you have a belief or a faith or an experience of a higher power, you might pick up on what I'm speaking of in nostalgia. There might be a higher part of us, something we long for, something we wish to get back to, something that has the sense of eternality, a sense of unconditional love. It all is much easier once you have this reference point 
of who you are. Oh, yes. Then you can, you can look at the ego structure and it's quite clear mm -hmm. when it is acting. But before you do not have no. a reference point, what, are you, what do you do? You have to, I would say that longing and our intuition are yeah. the things to go for. I had the intuition that if I could find a man who had done this, yeah. like I found Richard Rose, then I would know that it's what to do and what I could do. I knew with him that it was possible. I also knew that when I met him, and he was just a common man from West Virginia, that it was possible for me. I knew I didn't have to go to India, and I didn't have to be Tibetan. You know, the, uh, a little white boy in America could do it. Mm. So I thought, you know, that gave me that confidence that I can look at this. I can do it too if he could do it. So, tell me a little bit about the listening attention. You say it's the listening attention is the gateway yes. to yourself. And uh, you're suggesting uh, this, to not only to listen, but to look. Yes, yes. It, listening in that sense is, uh, one poet once, once put it as, it's listening with the eyes. Yes. Yes, it's trying to get the innocent childlike part of ourselves to come forward and to be the part that that we're looking through as opposed to the, the thinking mind mm -hmm. or else the emotional feeling parts that are uh, wanting or are fearful. This, this little child part of us inside, which I call the listening attention, yeah. can get in touch with uh, the nostalgic parts of ourselves so that we can start remembering these things. The, the listening attention part of ourselves isn't concerned with the world. It's concerned more with uh, our innocent inner parts. And it's also very passive to the world in that it doesn't want to change anything out here. It's not interesting in, in, in what it, we want to get or what we're losing or what our emotional states are. It's more interesting in, in just listening to what we might can get from the intuition or what we might can just see out here in a new way. We can't find something if it's if it wasn't in us. It's under the haystack. Right? Yeah, oh. it, it has to. It finds that which relates to itself. Say if we, if you're out watching a beautiful sunset, which might could you know get you a glimpse of the standing now if if the mood was right. If you find this beautiful sunset and you see the beauty in it, if you're lucky enough to take a look back into yourself at the same moment, you'll see that this beauty is actually coming from you and being projected onto the sunset. The sunset is uh, like enough slate or picture out there that it'll accept the projection. The same thing is true with spiritual teachers and systems, books. What we see in these is in us. Otherwise, how do we know it? We know the truth because it resonates with something inside. But because of our egocentric nature, we can't see that something like God, enlightenment, absolute, beauty, that these things could actually be part of us, the real part. Beauty and nostalgia are just little tricks, little hooks that the 
inner self uses to try and get us to turn around and look inside. I've often felt that nostalgia can be a thread for us in this sense, to find that beauty within. We have a longing, it's almost a, a memory of something better, a sense of something beautiful, a sense of something simple. If we have this sense, this longing, this nostalgic feeling inside of us, we can follow it as a thread gives us a hint to look back inside rather than out. Also the spiritual teachers in the books are also a thread. We realize that there's something true in them. Our intuition points to that. So we look back inside into the quiet stillness and maybe we'll find that beauty shining within. In a quiet mind, we can receive signals from the inner self, from nostalgia, maybe get a little insight into what it means.
jour.